Hey guys, Xander here with the Fusion Cam team, and today we're going to be looking at modeling and joints or assemblies if you know them from SOLIDWORKS. At least that's where I knew them from. Inside of Fusion, joints act a little differently than any other modeler that I've at least tried. And it was a little confusing for me for at least the first four months until someone told me I was doing everything wrong and showed me the correct way. I'm hopefully going to teach you guys a few things and uh, hopefully not screw up again because this is like my fourth take. What we're making today is the vise and table for my pocket NC. And what we have is just a simple mate here with a sliding jaw, so it has limits. And then these pins are in there and they're super easy to realign. And this table is 0.885 inches below the origin, which is the center of rotation. And that's important because when I hop over into the cam environment and I do a setup, all I do for my origin is I just do model origin. And that makes it super easy for me because I don't have to try clicking on anything. I don't have to make sure that I'm thinking about it correctly. I know that my origin is always going to be the center of rotation. So hopping over into the other document I have set up. This is all that makes up the assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to align this bottom plate. We're going to go top to bottom. Or sorry, bottom to top. And we're going to align the bottom table 0.885 inches below the origin. So the one tool you need in order to make this happen successfully is going to be the as built joint, which creates a joint without moving any components. It adds a joint and then just offsets it so that it's in the place where it's at currently. You might get a little confused if you're looking at a assemble and you just say, wait, where is as built joint? It's not there. And this got me for like six months. It doesn't show up unless capture design history is on. So if you don't see as built joint up here or underneath assembly, you got to make sure that your design history is being captured. Pro tip from someone who made that mistake way too often. First thing we're going to do is we are going to align this table with the origin. So we're just going to grab this point right here and we're going to grab the origin right here. Hit OK. And then we're going to move this. Make sure you're on components, not bodies. And the Z distance is going to be negative 0.885. All right, so now this is offset from the origin to here, 0.885. So that's exactly where we need it. And so now what usually people do is you're going to go to the table and you say, OK, I'm done with that. That's in the right position. It's not going to move. So we're going to right click ground it. No, wrong. That's what I was doing wrong. That's what I see people doing wrong on YouTube. That is not the correct way I found out. And here is the better way. So what we're going to do is we're going to use as built joint. We're going to go ahead and capture the position. And then we're going to select the table. We're going to make sure that the type is rigid. And then we're going to select the top level component over here in the browser, which is pocket NC cam setup. Hit OK. And now this works functionally the same as a ground except for now we have the position that it's supposed to be at and the as-built joint. So that way we have a fully defined joint to tell it where it's at instead of just being this is the position and now it's pinned down. It's a little bit more parametric, I guess. It makes more sense in bigger assemblies and it works better. Moving forward, the next thing we need to do is add the fixed jaw, this one right here. And to do this, it requires this dowel pin to be in that hole there. We're just going to align everything first. And then instead of jointing all this together, because there's really no need to try and add all the joints for the fixed vise, we're going to position everything with the align command. And then we're just going to make them a rigid group. Quick tip here, when you're trying to grab something in the middle of something, so I want to get the center point here, and I can't quite get it because every time I go to hover over it, I select the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover over the face, push control, and now it's going to keep those control points active, and I can choose which one I want. Okay, so now I have the fixed jaw that is now bolted down and aligned with that dowel pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our rigid group. It's going to ask us if we want to capture the position. So now that we've already moved everything into the correct position, we will go ahead and capture it so that none of them move. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the sliding jaw. Okay, so now we have that fully assembled and we're gonna do the same thing where we make that a rigid group. Now that we have that and this moves as a rigid group, we need to mate this onto there. To do that, we're going to create a slider. Looks like I got it right the first time. Hit okay. So now because that is a rigid group, those all move together. 
Now, of course, this isn't very realistic. How are you gonna clamp a part like this? So we're gonna right click edit joint limits. We're gonna add a minimum and a maximum. Minimum of zero and a maximum of 1.25. And so now when I try moving this, it won't go past zero or 1.25. And then you don't have to worry about, is that enough threads? It, yes, it's enough threads now because I measured it. Now we're down to the last part, which is just these set screws, which are kind of like the grippy part of the vise. I'm dealing with wax again, okay? Wax, it's, it's not like any high force materials. So set screws are okay. Here's where we're gonna have my final trick for you guys. These set screws are all the same component. Control C, Control V, copy pasted. So whatever we do to one, happens to all of them. I know that these screws stick out 0.2 inches exactly from my vise every single time I screw them in. That's where they bottom out. I've measured it in every single hole. 0.2 give or take, it's on the large side. So what we're gonna do is we're going to activate one of these components so that way we can modify that component instead of our base assembly. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create a joint origin. Now this is kind of like creating our own quick snap basically. So I'm going to create a simple joint origin, zoom in real close here on this face up here, and I'm going to try and grab the center point. There is that, so it's going to by default add the joint origin where we selected, but I don't want that. I know that these stick out by 0.2, so I'm going to offset the Y by negative 0.2. So now you can see that there's going to be a joint origin here, 0.2 inches below the top, so that we can now quick snap there. And each one of these components, because we edited one and they're all the same, each one of these now has the same exact joint origins. Sweet, less work for us later on. So we're gonna hit okay, and we're going to go back and activate our assembly again. So now that we have our joint origins created, we can joint these set screws into their respective positions. We are going to create a joint and we are going to align this screw. We're grabbing the joint origin we just made, and now we're going to align that with this top hole right here. And we don't want a slider. We just want it to be, yeah, we want it to be rigid. So that is there. Now we're just gonna repeat the process. Okay, so now we have all four of them jointed up, but now I'm gonna throw a scenario out there. If I wanted to change these positions, it's gonna be kind of difficult because if I wanted to change two of these, I have to basically edit two mates. And you know, that's a lot of work, laziness, blah, blah, blah. Well, all we have to do is cleverly name these to fixed jaw one and fixed jaw, jaw two. Someone's gonna complain about that being backwards, I know it. And so all we have to do for that is now we're just going to right click, edit joint, and component two, instead of being that hole, we can just change that. And over here, right click, edit joint. Instead of that one, we can do, wait, did I just click that one? I did, didn't I? And that is why you don't name them one and two. Anyways, <laughs> you just like that, put it there, hit okay. And now as easy as that, we have relocated them. And notice that as many times as we change this up or as many times as we move this and whatnot, it's not going to add in any ground mates or unground. And we're not gonna have a bunch of saved positions and all that cluttering up our timeline. We have a very succinct timeline down here of when we created and aligned everything all the way up until when we had it fully jointed up. And this is even more cluttered than my original one because I had to take it apart first to get it into this. If you look over on this one in the model environment, I actually have only one set screw location here. If I edit the joint and I change that to here, these two set screws are actually, they're dimensioned apart and in a rigid group. So that's one rigid group. This, this sliding jaw has these pivot screws in them also, but I didn't want to introduce the joint origin before, so it had to be a little bit more complicated. But now it's a challenge for you guys to go out and take the design and make it simpler and make it like this one. Hopefully this helps you guys out and explains the topic of what grounding is and isn't. Well, at least what you don't use grounding for and how to use joints to kind of make the best assembly inside of Fusion if you're coming from a SOLIDWORKS mentality like myself and not quite sure what everything's trying to do. And for whoever stuck through this outro, which according to my analytics is not that many of you guys, one last pro tip, if you do a joint origin, you drop down, you can do between two faces now. I just saw this on uh, John Sanders' uh, NYC CNC video. I didn't know that we had this. 
And so now we have a plane here and I can add in a joint right there halfway in between two planes. So this was something really cool that I think I'm going to try practicing a little bit more on because I haven't actually seen it before. But uh, definitely let me know if you guys know of any tips because I'm constantly learning from you guys just as much. So thanks and let's see what you guys make.